our freedom movement 1857 to 1947 introduction the revolt of 1857 shook the foundation of the british rule in india and kindled an urge in the hearts of indians to become free they felt that they should remove their shortcomings if they wanted to become free there were many social evils that prevailed in the society at that time there were many europeans and indian scholars who tried to eradicate social evils such as sati child marriage caste system etc from the society Indian National Congress (INC). Few organizations in the world have as long and illustrated a history as the Indian National Congress. Titans such as Gopal Krishna Gokhale, Lala Lajpat Rai, Mahatma Gandhi, and Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose. served on its presidency here we have only focused on inc's contribution to india's freedom struggle after the revolt of 1857 the whole of india came under one rule railway post and telegraph services were started educated people got employment some educated people were pained to see the miserable conditions of india and began to dream of its independence among such thinkers were raja ram mohan roy who worked hard to abolish the sati pratha and supported marriage of widows gopal krishna gokhale who founded bharat sevak samaj asked young men to get modern education and serve the country dada bhai narawji also did a lot of social work indian national congress was founded by sir a o hume in 1885 in bombay to create awareness among the people the first session was held in bombay and 72 delegates attended it thereafter every year members met in different in cities the number of young people joining the movement increased in 1905 bengal's partition was declared against which swadeshi and boycott movement were started prominent leaders of the indian national congress of that era were bipin chandrapal lala lajpat rai and bal gangadhar tilak these three leaders were often called lal bal pal they were from the extremist group bal gangadhar tilak declared freedom is my birthright and i shall have it These leaders inspired the people to fight for their rights and become free citizens. Tilak also wrote against the British in his paper Kesari, Eyes of Gandhi. Gandhi ji returned to India from South Africa in 1915. He was pained to see that people here were divided on the basis of caste, religion, creed, gender and color. Gandhi ji was shocked at the treatment meted out to the lower castes and untouchables. He renamed the untouchables Harijans, meaning children of God. He demanded 30 5% increase in the wages of mill workers in Ahmedabad these actions won him the support of the masses in south africa gandhi ji had developed the technique of satyagraha based on truth and non violence satyagraha was his most patent weapon against the british the british passed several acts that were harsh and infringed on the basic rights of the people among them was the rawlath act of 1919 according to this act any person could be arrested without a trial Hartals and meetings were held all over the country. One such meeting was held at Jallianwala Bagh in Amritsar. The meeting was attended by thousands of men, women and children. The British under General Dyer blocked the only exit and opened fire. The unarmed people had no means of escaping. Thousands of people were killed. People were shocked at the brutality of the British. Non cooperation movement in 1918 when the first world war ended it was decided that turkey should be divided among the victorious powers this upset the muslims in india because the caliph or sultan of turkey was also the religious head of all muslims thus Indian Muslims under the leadership of Muhammad Ali and Shaukat Ali started the Khilafat movement. The Congress under Gandhi ji's leadership saw this as a golden opportunity for bringing about Hindu-Muslim unity. The non-cooperation movement was launched to protest against the treatment of Turkey and the Jallianwala Bagh massacre. Gandhi ji asked the people not to cooperate with the British and use non-violent means. Men, women and children left their homes, offices, colleges and schools to join the movement however in 1922 when the people became violent at chori chora in uttar pradesh and killed 22 policemen gandhi ji called off the movement during the non cooperation movement many young leaders emerged some of them were jawahar lal nehru abdul kalam azad sarojini naidu subhash chandra bose sardar vallabhbhai patel etc 
revolutionaries. Some people believe that the cruelty of the British should be answered by violent measures. These people were called revolutionaries or extremists. Prominent among them were Bhagat Singh, Chandra Shekhar Azad, B. K. Dutt, Rajguru, Sukhdev and others. Simon Commission The non-cooperation movement had failed. In 1927, the British government wanted a report on political reforms in India and on amending the Government of India Act. So it appointed a commission. The commission consisted of Sir John Simon and six other members. All of them were members of the British Parliament. There was no Indian as its member. The commission was an insult to the Indians. The people of India rose as one man against this step. Under Lala Ji's leadership, it was resolved to boycott the Simon Commission. The Indians showed black flags and shouted, Simon go back, in protest because the Commission did not have any Indian in it. Civil Disobedience Movement Civil disobedience means active refusal to obey certain laws, demands and commands of a government or of any occupying international power. In its most non-violent form in India known as Ahimsa, it could be said that it is compassion in the form of respectful disagreement. The people joined the civil disobedience movement all over India. On the northeast, 13-year-old Rani Gaindin Liu led the movement. On the northeast frontier province, Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan, also known as Frontier Gandhi, led the movement. Salt Satyagraha. It was a campaign of non-violent protest against the British salt tax in colonial India and triggered the wider civil disobedience movement. Mohandas Karamchand Gandhi, commonly called Mahatma Gandhi, led the Dandi March Salt Satyagraha from its base Sabarmati Ashram near Ahmedabad to the sea coast near the village of Dandi on March 12, 1930. India Movement. The Quit India Movement, Bharat Chodo Andolan or the August Movement or August Kranti was a civil disobedience movement launched in India in August 1942 in response to Gandhiji's call for immediate independence. Gandhi hoped to bring the British government to the negotiating table. The Indian people now wanted complete independence. They asked the British to leave India as early as possible. The Indian National Congress under Gandhiji's leadership started the Quit India Movement in 1942 in protest against the British policies towards India. The British immediately arrested Gandhiji and other leaders. Gandhiji gave the slogan of do or die to the Indians which meant either they get freedom or die for it. Subhash Chandra Bose, who had been elected twice as the president of the Indian National Congress, escaped from India in 1941 to organize an armed struggle against the British from outside India. The Indian National Army INA or Azad Hind Force was organized by him to liberate India. Men, revolution and Indian prisoners of war joined the INA. Azad Hind Forge The Indian National Army, INA or Azad Hind Forge, was an armed force formed by Indian nationalists in 1942 in Southeast Asia during the World War II. The aim of the army was to overthrow the British Raj in colonial India with Japanese assistance. This army played an important role in the freedom movement. Subhash Chandra Bose gave a call, Dilli Chalo, March to Delhi. He also told people, give me blood, I will give you freedom. In January 1944, Azad Hind Forge entered Assam and very soon it conquered Kohima, Manipur, Vishnupur, Imphal and other places. On 18th August 1945, Netaji Subhash fled to an unknown destination and never returned back. Dependence of India Arrival of Lord Mountbatten In 1946, Lord Mountbatten arrived in Delhi amid a buzz of political activity. After World War II, the British seemed keen to wash their hands of India. Partition of India It was one of the worst movements of people in recent history after that of the Jews in the World War II. A nation was dismembered. On 15th August 1947, India became free. But the country was divided into two parts, India and Pakistan. India kept its tryst with destiny. Midai bore it the precious gift of freedom. Following an announcement on 14th of August 1947, Pakistan became the other independent country. At midnight, Lord Mountbatten administered the oath to Jawaharlal Nehru as the first Prime Minister of India. Lord Mountbatten took down the Union Jack from the ramparts of Red Fort and the national flag of India began to fly in its place. India got its complete independence from the British rule. And 
and gave its citizens a free country. India became a free country but at the cost of division of country into two parts. It broke the hearts of millions across the border. The divide and rule policy of the British had been successful in dividing the Hindus and Muslims. India has been an independent country for more than 60 years. It has fought wars and faced terrorism but still remains strong and united. In this lies the uniqueness of our country that is unity in diversity.